Hey everyone, back again. Welcome back to another video review. This time we're going to be taking a look at the much anticipated new Thomas the Tank Engine special Blue Mountain Mystery. So overall I thought the special was just amazing but we gotta get into the plot. But before we get into the plot I must let you know that there are some spoilers in it so um, if uh, you want to, uh, if you want to be, uh, for those of you who have not seen the movie yet, um, you should probably uh, uh, wait until you see the movie before you see this video. So uh, basically, don't watch this video. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the so the special begins. The ep the movie begins with uh, all the little narrow gauge engines working at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Uh, Paxton uh, as well. Uh, just as he's about to leave with a, a truckload, or a truckload, a train load full of slate uh, that's supposed to be needed to the docks, uh, one of the keystones from the bridge, uh, known as Blondin Bridge, uh, falls off right in front of him, uh, and Reneus is basically coming back from the upper Terrence with a, another train, and he doesn't see until it's too late. Uh, however, he's able to cross it just in time. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Renee's paint is scratched, and Paxton is the uh, Paxton gets the worst of it because pretty much the whole bridge pretty much uh, uh, crashes on him. Uh, meanwhile, Thomas is on his branch line working uh, working his best. Uh, it was kind of nice to see Annie and Clarabel talk again because they talk quite a bit in this. Uh, so, uh, so Top of my Hat uh, uh, arrives on Winston, the inspection track car, and he tells uh, Thomas to go work at the quarry while Paxton's being repaired. Uh, so Thomas goes to the quarry while Emily takes Paxton to the steamworks, or the diesel works rather, sorry. <laughs> and uh, from there, Thomas uh, works with his little friends. Uh, then one, one day he notices a little green engine uh, coming from one of the other tunnels and uh, hiding through the other tunnel. He pretty much asked his friends uh, what the, uh, who the little engine is, but uh, pretty much all the engines give random answers like it's a runaway car, it's, uh, uh, it was a mountain goat, which was, I thought that was funny from, uh, I think it was Rusty, yeah, Rusty said that. Uh, yeah, that was funny. So Thomas figures out that the little engine's name is Luke, and Luke has been hiding there because uh, he did something very bad a long time ago. Uh, Scar Scarlowey tells Thomas not to tell anyone about anyone else about Luke, so Thomas pretty much keeps his, uh, his lips sealed, or his funnel locked, or whatever. And Scarlowey pretty much tells, uh, tells uh, about the Luke uh, doing something bad, but he doesn't say anything specific. So uh, then the, uh, so after that Thomas heads back home uh, to the sheds and he asks the other engines about the bad things they have done. Uh, Percy uh, talks about uh, the time that he uh, he ran over Sir Topham Hatt's uh, trolley, uh, trolley uh, cart which uh, caused the trousers and the jam to fall on him which is a reference to uh, a scarf for Percy back in season three so that was pretty cool. Uh, uh, Henry talks about uh, the time that uh, th Henry says the baddest thing that he has done uh, was him uh, pretty much uh, being uh, hiding in the tunnel because he didn't want his paint to get ruined by the rain. So, so top of my hat, pretty much had it bricked up, and that's a reference to uh, Come Out Henry back in season one, or a sad story for Henry if you're a UK fan. Uh, and then Thomas, of course, talked about the very infamous. Uh, incident that he was in when uh, he went past the danger sign and fell into a mine. Um, and of course that's a reference to uh, Down the Mine back, also back in season one, and very late too. So, and they didn't have them in the alphabetical order. If they had the flashbacks of the original models, it would have been great. Uh, and I say that because CGI had so many errors in the flashbacks. Mainly the fact that, well the main one of course in the Henry in the in Henry's flashbacks that he was in his new shape, not his old shape, but in the original episode, uh, 
and the mind collapse was just so unrealistic in my opinion like really you could in the original episode the original model episode you could see the mind hole but anyways so uh back to the uh, back to the movie uh, the next day, uh, uh, oh, and they also, uh, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here, uh, they also talked about uh, Diesel losing the Joby Wood back in Misty Island Rescue, uh, and, uh, and uh, they figure out that that's uh, not enough to be sent away from Sodor forever. So, ooh, excuse me. So uh, Thomas, the next day, uh, works at the, uh, the Blue Mountain Quarry with all his little guys, uh, and he uh, pretty much, uh, he tells uh, Scar Lowy uh, pretty much about, uh, you know, what, uh, th bad things about being sent away from Sodor and whatnot. Scar Lowy kind of misinterprets the situation, but then Thomas really, like, uh, is quick to, like, change the subject, so. Anyways, they get back to work, and, uh, Thomas talks about, you know, Luke wanting to be his friend. So Luke pretty much hides, comes out of the tunnel, and they're pretty much best of friends. Uh, Luke tells, uh, afterwards, Luke tells the story, uh, well, uh, yeah, Luke tells the story of, of him doing the bad thing, which uh, was a long time ago. He was on a ship with a yellow engine, and he wanted to be lifted off first, but unfortunately, during the lift procedure at the docks, uh, he, he bumps into the yellow engine, causing the yellow engine to fall into the sea, and, uh, from Luke's side of the story, and you know you know where this is going. <laughs> uh, uh, from Luke's side of the story, uh, he never saw the yellow engine again, and he was pretty much put in the steamworks to be repaired and whatnot. Uh, Luke feels very ashamed of what he'd done, and uh, Thomas assures him that uh, that he'll uh, f figure out the whole situation, and whatnot. Uh, so Sir Top and then Sir Top and Mr. Percival come along with Winston to tell pretty much Thomas to go back to his branch line because Paxton's repaired. But what Thomas doesn't know up until the end of the conversation is that Paxton was pretty much eavesdropping on the conversation. And uh, Paxton pretty much hides all the stories and whatnot. Uh, next day, Thomas is on his branch line and he pretty much uh, asked Toby to pretty much... Uh, help on the branch line, because Toby was originally helping when Paxson was out of action, or shall we say repaired, or being repaired. Uh, and uh, Thomas pretty much uh, goes off to find the yellow engine. Uh, so he pretty much searches high and low, he searches at the uh, the dumps and the, and, the, and the coastal tracks and all that. Uh, he then talks to Edward, who uh, Edward suggests for Thomas to go to the diesel works. So Thomas goes to the diesel works, and he is shocked to find out that Paxton uh, is talking to Diesel about this, but Diesel, much like Scarlowy, is misinterpreting the whole situation, and that was that was pretty much the turning point of the movie, that the misinterpretation part. So, Diesel pretty much uh, says that we need to go find Sir Topham Had and, and get rid of Luke and all that, and then because uh, Thomas is obviously trying to find the yellow edge of the Diesel works, so pretty much Thomas leaves the Diesel works. Diesel sees him from, I don't know, looks like 50 meters, <laughs> or pretty much like 50 feet, and uh, yeah, Tom Thomas goes off to the docks to find Cranky to see if he knows about the yellow engine, uh, and of course Cranky was the one that lifted uh, Luke, so there we go. Uh, so uh, th uh, Thomas goes to find Cranky, who's very busy at the moment, or was busy at the moment, and uh, Thomas uh, asks uh, if he lifted the yellow engine or whatever from uh, from the sea, and Cranky says, "Yes, he did, but he all he knew about him was he had a broken headlamp and that uh, he spoke a very different language." So uh, then Diesel and Paxton arrive, and they ask Cranky uh, where Stop Bat is. Like, of course, Cranky is being bombarded with so many questions because that's Cranky's personality. And Thomas, he's He's cranky, he doesn't want to be bothered because he's so busy with stuff. Yeah, so Thomas heads off to the Steamworks. As he's deter- uh, Well, yeah, Thomas heads to the Steamworks. Uh, where he talks to Victor, and Kevin obviously is pretty much- Kevin, where he just pretty much, uh, you know, mishandles things, and that leads to all sorts of problems for him. Uh, so Victor tells his side of the story. Uh, 
So pretty much his side of the story was from, it was a long time ago, and he came from a faraway country. I assume it was from Cuba or, or, Spain, or Spain. So anyways, he was on the boat with Luke, and during the storm, uh, the wheel chains uh, broke on, on Victor, causing him to uh, remain uncontrollable. And I don't know why the, uh, like, the captain should have known that about this. Like, one of the workers should have reported to the captain about about Victor's uh, chains being broken. Uh, so, uh, anyways, they head to the docks. Luke, uh, and, show, and Luke obviously, uh, because he, he wanted to be lifted first, so he gets lifted off first. He bumps into Victor. Victor falls into the sea. But they can't lift him up immediately because of the bad weather. And thankfully for Victor, he landed on a jetty. But his firebox was obviously messed up. So, uh, Victor was left there for days until finally he was lifted up on a nice sunny day. Well, it was sunny on that sequence. And uh, he was pretty much sent to the steamworks. Uh, and the whole thing that Victor said in, the, in his flashback story was that no one understood him because he spoke Spanish. Uh, which, of course, is the language that he spoke. So, Or Cuban, I don't know. I think it was Spanish. If, if I'm wrong, put it in the comment section. But anyways... Uh, so Victor pretty much, uh, learned how to speak English, and he also got the, he also got his red coat of paint, which we all know now. Uh, Thomas is very happy to hear about the story, so he goes off to, to, uh, find Luke at the quarry. Uh, on his way, he, uh, Victor's like, uh, Victor's like, who's Luke? <laughs> which is kind of funny, because he should have known, because it says, because if you notice Luke, it has his nameplate on both sides, so... Yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, Tom, Thomas goes off to find Luke at the quarry, but on his way he meet, he sees Diesel and Paxton talking to Sir Topham Hatt. Uh, uh, and uh, Sir Topham Hatt uh, pretty much uh, doesn't know what Diesel's talking about, and he asks that Diesel takes uh, Mavis to the Diesel Works. So M Diesel does so, and Sir Topham Hatt tells Paxton to go back to work at the quarry because he doesn't know why he's following Diesel. And... Uh, as soon as uh, Sir Topham had and Winston leave, Thomas heads to the quarry, where uh, uh, where he tells uh, where he tries to explain to Luke the whole the real situation about the story. Uh, and Scarlowe's like, "Oh my God, you just uh, you just uh, told uh, you just told uh, our secret. Now we're not going to talk to you anymore. Yeah, so that's what the little engines do. They don't want to talk to Thomas anymore. So they pretty much head up to the upper terraces. Diesel and Paxton arrive at the quarry, and they say that uh, they say stuff like, "We're going to tell. Uh, uh, we're going to pretty much send Luke away from Sodor forever." Uh, Luke uh, pretty much uh, gets uh, to one of the upper terraces as fast as he can. Uh, so uh, Thomas comes up with uh, so Thomas uh, does one of the most ris riskiest and one of the most dangerous things I think he's ever done in his in his career, <laughs> shall we say? Uh, that is, uh, he goes to Rocky uh, to ask him to lift on to lift him onto Owen because Owen's the platform, and and Owen pretty much uh, lifts Thomas up with all his might and strength and. Uh, uh, Th Thomas uh, manages to get to the top. However, his wheels, of course, are too big for the narrow gauge tracks, and he uh, he collides into a set of buffers, and he's left hanging there, trying to keep his balance, essentially. So, yeah, that's what I mean by risky and dangerous. If you go up to the upper terrace on a standard gauge train on a narrow gauge track, you're gonna get screwed for life. <laughs> yeah, my recommendation. Don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah, or, or the Mythbusters. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Aside, uh, so Luke uh, sees Thomas is in danger. Luke manages to rescue Thomas before he falls off. Uh, and uh, they pr he pretty much pushes him back to Owen. Uh, and Owen, uh, uh, and pretty much Owen's uh, platform pretty much uh, descends rapidly and Luke is left. Is pretty much uh, chained there. He's still chained there. So he pretty much follows Thomas, and they uh, <laughs> fall down to the bottom of of the platform. And uh, it's kind of funny how Thomas's eyes were kind of rolling back, uh, back and up and down and side to side. Pretty much Thomas's eyes were kind of going like that. So, uh, and that was kind of funny reference to the uh, the models when they did that a lot. 
Uh, so Diesel, of course, is unhappy. So Top Matter and Mr. Percival arrive with Winston, and they d demand to know what the whole situation is. Uh, Diesel tells his misinterpreted uh, side of the story. Uh, well, uh, well, Victor, uh, well, Paxton ar uh, arrives with Victor because during the sequence, Diesel tells Paxton uh, to go to the to find Sir Top Pat, but Thomas actually tells Paxton to go to the Sea Works fetch Victor. So that's what uh, Paxton did. He went to go fetch Victor, and Victor tells uh, and tells. Uh, Luke, his side of the story, uh, uh, tells the whole truth about the story, uh, and Victor and uh, and Luke is confused because Victor is in his uh, his, his in his uh, known red color scheme as opposed to the yellow scheme in the flashback. Uh, but Victor explained that of course he was painted red after he was repaired, and uh, uh, Luke Luke of course becomes very happy. Uh, so Top Hat pretty much forgives Thomas for not working on his branch line, obviously, because Toby's been working on it, and yeah, uh, I, yeah. So in the end, uh, Thomas. Uh, so in the end, Thomas goes to the Steamworks, where Luke is getting uh, repainted and all that. And uh, and at the end, we see Reneus uh, in his yellow scheme, because of course, uh, because of course of. Uh, he, his paint got scratched in the uh, earlier in the movie, so and uh, yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much the end of the the special as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, at the end, Reneus gets his new scheme, and pretty much uh, everyone is happy in the end. So yeah, overall, it was a very good uh, movie. Uh, it was it was very fun to watch. Uh, another, now, one of the characters I forgot to mention, of course, was Merrick, who is the, the crane in the movie, who's right by the, the Blondin Bridge. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Merrick, overall, he was very funny, because uh, he's a lazy crane, because he sleeps a lot, as opposed to Cranky's, because imagine Merrick and Cranky were, like, uh, I don't know, related, because they're crates, but they're different type of crates, but anyways. But, yeah, Mer Merrick didn't do much. In the movie, he just slept and congratulated uh, Thomas, or, or c congratulated Luke for saving Thomas's life. Because <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh, Thomas's life was in the hands of a little narrow gauge engine named Luke. <laughs> so yeah, uh, overall, the movie very good. You should go see it. It's a highly recommended movie. You will not be disappointed. It's a great movie. Of, uh, I mean. I mean, this this movie was just an absolute, uh, like, it was an absolute masterpiece of, of of ingenuity. It was just terrific. So, overall, go see the movie. You'll not be disappointed. So, yeah, that is my video review of the Blue Mountain Mystery uh, uh, of the Tom, of the new Tom... Let's try this again. That is my uh, video review of the uh, Blue Mountain... Uh, that is my video review of the new Thomas and Friends uh, Blue Mountain Mystery. That is my video review of the Thomas and Friends Blue Mountain Mystery Special. I will see you all very soon. Uh, and I'll be back with my, my next video as soon as possible. Oh, and I uh, uh, forgot to mention that. Uh, uh, yeah, never mind. I was just going to say that. Uh, yeah, it was just a. It was just a well done movie. I I was completely blown away by. But everything I saw in there, so. Anyways, overall, go see the movie. Highly recommend it. It's out on DVD now. You will not be disappointed. And it's, it's a very enjoyable movie to watch. You should go watch it. Highly recommend it. Hi highly recommend. Overall, highly recommend it. Sorry, I sounded like a broken record. I'm just trying to gather my thoughts here. But anyways, that is my video review of the Thomas and Friends Blue Mountain Mystery Special. I will see you all very soon. I'll be back for my next video as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, so take care, see you soon, have a great day, and I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye!